The handcuffs and chains are put on. The media gathers. Cameras focused on Gunnarsson. Are you ready? <laughs> the lid is put on, pushing Gunnarsson under the cement. The time is started. It's reminiscent of Gunnarsson's big break moment. In 1987, at the request of the amazing Randy, the man who took over from Houdini as the world's greatest escape artist, Gunnarsson went to Los Angeles for a live TV show. He was supposed to perform a handcuff trick, but the amazing Randy was injured. So they put Randy on the phone and he's talking. He says, well, you know, get that Gunnarsson kid to do it. He can do it. And so, you know, it was, it was something out of like a, like a bad movie. Like if I would have scripted this, it, it, it wouldn't have happened any, any better. And so the producer says, oh, he says, uh, Randy can't come back. He's, he, he can't do the escape. He's hurt. And I'm like, oh, no. And he says, hey, but he wants you to do the escape. The milk can escape. Houdini's biggest stunt, a milk can full of water locked with six maximum security padlocks. They brought Randy back from the hospital in the stretcher. And he kind of talked me through it as to, you know, what to expect. And, you know, it's going to be dark in there and you're underwater and, you know, not to panic and, you know, all this kind of thing. And it's like, oh, wow. Without time for rehearsal, Gunnarsson was put in front of a live studio audience. They locked me up and I got out of it for the very first time on live national television. And it was like, wow, you know, I didn't know if I could do it. But, you know, again, Randy kind of believed in me and, and, and I did it. It was Gunnarsson's lodging pad, but it was also the end of the road for the amazing Randy. He retired from the escape business, and he, he was so impressed with what I did that he named me as a successor and gave me, like, all his old equipment and handcuffs and, and things that belonged to Houdini and his milk can and his hanging apparatus that he used to hang over Niagara Falls. And it was like, like a great, you know, kind of endorsement. I, and I was really kind of taken back, this kid from Winnipeg, and, you know, the greatest escape artist that lives in Houdini, you know, believed in me and my abilities. Gunnarsson was honored as the first recipient of the Houdini Award on the Magic Stars television show in Tokyo, Japan, a place where Gunnarsson performed an escape nearly four kilometers above the ground while in a free fall he got out of a straitjacket. But this trick seems to have its hang-ups. Gunnarsson wanted to be out in fewer than 90 seconds, but two and a half minutes later, he's still in the cell. Finally, after two minutes, 43 seconds. You lose track of, 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 of time and everything, of what's going on and going through your, your body, but I didn't think it would take that long. But with Jen and Zach looking on, Gunnarsson has some advice. It scares the, the daylights out of me, but, uh, you know, uh, I hope stay in school, become a doctor, be a lawyer. <laughs> All the things I was told and never listened. Now look at me. Really helped shape me and, and, and made my career successful was, was a kid growing up in Winnipeg and, and, a, and an adult growing up in, in Manitoba. And, being so grounded by the people in this community and I really think it's 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 helped shape me and help help make me a better person and help make me a better escaper. There is one thing Gunnarsson can't escape the question it's the same question you've been asking why would anyone attempt these dangerous escapes? I don't want any regrets when my time's come whether it's tomorrow or when I'm 99 years old I don't want to look back on my life saying dang man I wish I would have done this or I wish I would have done that and, and I like um, the challenges. I, I like overcoming the obstacles. I like doing what somebody says you can't do, that there's no way you'd be able to accomplish that.